Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, another special episode. We're going to hold off on starting season four for just one more week. Although I am crazy excited for season four after looking at some more pictures from the season. <laughs> DJ's hair. The hair. I the just hair. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been in the news this week, too, because he's going to make a couple appearances in some TV shows. Uh, one of them being L.A. to Vegas. He's got like, that. I've never heard of that show. Oh, I just saw an ad for that. It's on Fox. It's like it's supposed to be this flight that they that these people are on basically the it's the crew and they're like the party crew oh, and yeah. the stuff that goes on between la to vegas that flight oh okay well dj's gonna make an appearance on there and it's got me thinking more about the hair season mm-hmm. four <laughs> 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 but this week we do have a special episode what mostly what this episode is is we're gonna do our clip show our season three clip show of all of our favorite moments that we recorded during season three I, having listened to them, they are fantastic. I know, I know, I've, I'm biased here that <laughs> I think I think the things that we say are great. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Everyone's going to enjoy it. So please just stick around for 10 more minutes. And then we're going to get to the clip show and, and review all of our favorite and best moments of season three. But before we get there, the other thing that we wanted to do in this special episode of Go With The Heat was talk about the future of Go With The Heat. And we've hinted at this for the last three or four weeks in a row, we've talked about like, hey, you know, believe it or not, Miami Vice only has five seasons. <laughs> it's a thing. That's that's how many it's got. It's going to end. <laughs> no matter what we do, we're going to come to the end of Miami Vice. And you know what? That's going to happen in 2018. That's crazy. See, I pitched we make a season six uh, because <laughs> yeah. of oh my God. Uh, production costs involved. Um, <laughs> that would be a little difficult. So, There's not 22. Out of the question. Here it's out. <laughs> and then, of course, the Miami Vice movie, the Michael Mann movie with Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. That came years later. Which, by the way, I need to know why Colin Farrell still has the Don Johnson hair in that movie when it's supposed to be. Isn't it supposed to be in the present, not the past? I think so. I don't, I don't yeah, know. It's, I a, believe it's so. a sick mullet. He's got a huge <laughs> mullet. <laughs> so what we wanted to do today was just spend a couple minutes to talk about what our plans are for Go With The Heat and the Go With The Heat podcast. The name obviously comes from in the first season, actually in the first episode of Miami Vice, from a quote from DJ, from Don Johnson himself, where he says, Go With The Heat, Rico. And that's where we got the name for the podcast. But we realized that also that name is, and what's important to us, is really about 80s cop shows. And that's what we are all about, is 80s cop dramas, big, explosive 80s action movies. You name it, when it comes to those genres, we are into it. We are into it so much, in fact, other than just this little old independent podcast. But we have a bad movie night every Saturday night, and more often than not, except for when the other people choose, who are also in movie night, (laughs) when me, John, or Melissa choose, it's... Starring Jean-Claude, Steven Seagal, uh, Dolph Lundgren, Dolph Lundgren <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, Chuck well, Norris. Yeah. <laughs> Those are our go to people. Little, little, little Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger the sunglasses, the better. That's all I'll say about Chuck. <laughs> yes. Ninjas. <laughs> so one of the things that we have said is that we are for sure continuing the Go With The Heat podcast. And we're going to move on to another 80s cop show and we've talked a couple here and there 21 jump street a crime story alien nation um there's a the a team there's a handful of shows that we've already talked about and i think there's a little bit of debate internally because sci-fi and melissa just swooned as soon as i said 21 and i didn't have to say the rest (laughs) of the name (laughs) i've seen every episode i'd be willing to compromise with the a team (laughs) that's okay i love me some mr t I was going to marry him when I was a kid, so, you know. <laughs> I, I, I think what I would have to take a look at the soundtrack, though. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know I don't if there remember. is a soundtrack for that. <laughs> yeah. I might yeah, be was... putting myself in a job. <laughs> for sure, our plan is all of Miami Vice plus the movie, and then we would we want to move on to another cop show right after this one. Just keep go with the heat going. And we want to hear from you. And I mentioned it before. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. And let us know what shows 
you think we should continue on to? What are some front runners? We will definitely be doing some pilot episodes, some testing episodes later in the year and kind of get our feet wet with them and see which ones feel right. You know, like see, see which ones kind of click for us and fit our model. Yeah. So, and I think during that transition time, we're, we're also going to experiment with a few, uh, independent movie maybe episodes you know maybe maybe they would prefer cop uh, 80s movies like i heart or even deeper mm-hmm. than that yeah we would absolutely love to do and we are going to do this like we want to do some movie spinoffs so in some examples that like you're saying die hard and lethal weapon but also like beastmaster oh yeah conan oh, the barbarian yeah. oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh some of the amazing chuck norris movies we've seen already <laughs> <laughs> like invasion <laughs> usa the octagon <laughs> any, <laughs> any chuck norris where he's whispering ninjas to himself yes through the whole movie just for what it's worth <laughs> We also want to do some one-offs for TV shows, too. So an easy one, because, Melissa, I want you to take just a minute to explain how much of a JCVD fan you are. I love him. And I also <laughs> bought his shirt. He was doing a, a represent campaign for to save the sharks. And I have the shirt and Tim doing the splits with lasers on the shark's head. <laughs> I love to wear that shirt because I love to see people's faces because they're like, what the hell are you wearing? <laughs> also, the highlight of my life is that he liked a comment of mine on Instagram. <laughs> on his Instagram. I showed everybody that that he liked it. So just saying. I'm a super fan. Like. <laughs> so an easy one is obviously JCBJ, Jean-Claude Van Johnson, the show that's on Amazon. But also like, hey, what about just this one episode of LA to Vegas with Don Johnson. Yeah. You no. Know, what about the most recent Rocky movies? Mm-hmm. You know, like the the new ones that are coming out. What about if we did a marathon Royal Rumble one? Oh my gosh. <laughs> MST3K style over it. Like those are the, ty- the types of stuff that that we want to start doing. And so we have a ton, a ton of ideas for those kinds of things. And we're going to start doing that. Those things are going to start popping into the feed. Again, this is all about feedback from from you, the our listeners of the show. We want to hear from you. Like, do you want those things to end up in the main feed? We want those to be in a special feed that's just for these one-offs, these spin-off type shows that are for the short-run TV or a couple movies. Like, let us know. Email go at the heat at gmail.com and let us know where you want to see where those things land and what some of those could be. Like I said, we are all about 80s action and 80s cops. And so give us some ideas and let us know where, where you'd like to see those. And that really brings me to, well, how are we going to do this? As we've been going through this show, we've been doing it for about two years. Coming up this May will be two years of us doing Miami Vice. As we've gone through this show, we've learned a lot of lessons. You can definitely tell when you go back and listen to the originals. Like, we have come a long way in with our path with Miami Vice. Obviously, Jenna was in the first season. And then uh, (laughs) Melissa came in in season two. And she's been with us for season two and three. And for the rest of of the show. Melissa is going to be here. So that obviously changed. We've made some studio improvements. Uh, we've added some new shows, separate feed just for the music segment. John's music segments got uh, their own special place in the episode, too. So- yeah, I think when we all were learning together as we did these episodes, and we've come so far that I think we're at the point where it's like if we just had a little more resources, we could do so much more. So I, I think that's what what's exciting about right now is that with just a little bit more resources, we could be even better. Yeah, so I think we're ready to take this legit and be real content creators because for the most part, we're just been having fun. And I think the goal of every episode for us has been just to make each other laugh. Yeah, and we are good at that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so we realize where we are with the show and all these other things that we want to do. That's going to take some improvements to the studio. That's going to take some in some more investment into the show. It's going to take some more investment from us. And so we want to, and we want to do those things. We want to become better content creators. We want to take this more seriously and turn this into like, an actual network. And so that's where it comes back in with you, the listener. We would love for your support on Patreon. That's the platform that we've chosen to go forward with and ask for your investment into the Go With The Heat network is on Patreon. So you'll be able to find our Patreon at 
patreon.com slash go with the heat again with everything it's always <laughs> go with the heat you can find us go with the heat that's where we are and we're only <laughs> asking for a dollar a month that's it now that's a sweet deal that's a sweet deal for how much content you're getting from us just one dollar a month and that only equals twelve dollars a year and the way i like to think of it because i support a lot of people on patreon if you've never used patreon before it's a way for people to support the creators that they love by supporting them financially because for us doing this show doesn't come free for us there's the cost of the hosting for the website buying the domain all the equipment that we have here in the studio and so patreon is a way for you to show us your support by for as little as one dollar a month and we have some great rewards for our patrons and then we also have a laundry list of stuff of additional stuff that we want to make that and how we we would use this money that we would raise on patreon it would really open up a lot of doors for us because we'd be able to see the support of the of our listeners and what and where they want us to go we'd also be able to do all of these one-offs it would help us invest in those things that would take in order to do that and then of course all of our patrons would get those things first all these test runs of things that we would do we we would release those on patreon first you would be able to listen to that give us feedback on it and this would be a collaboration because in my opinion where we want to grow there's two ways that we can do that one we can start taking advertisements we can do it here on the show we can do it on the website we could start shilling stuff on twitter or something like that that is absolutely not the way that i want to go we make this show for people who are like us who love 80s cop dramas who love shoot 'em up 80s action movies the greatest decade of action movies and so we want to make stuff for those people people who are just like us and so if you value that then we would love your support on patreon and then we can just answer to you the listener on that content we're not trying to artificially increase views or listens by making something that's really clickbaity or controversial you know that's obviously really popular on youtube right now that's not us we love making this show we love talking about miami vice we love talking about 80s action movies and that's what's great about patreon that's what's great about the internet and that's what's great about podcasting find this little niche corner of people who are just like us we know you're out there <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. and again that covers all the stuff that we like to do these spinoffs these uh, we, we would at a certain milestone, we would officially make the movie podcast an official podcast. It would get its own support. It would get its own feed and, and everything. So we really, really, really encourage you to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat and see what the rewards are and see what the goals are that we have for growing this podcast. And we want to hear from you. Let us know what you think about us launching this Patreon and what your feedback is for us on that go with the heat at gmail.com we do want to hear from you on this this is a two-way street in the c communication here we want to hear from you the listener of this show and what you think of our decision to go down this road and and ways that we can make this show better absolutely re reach out to us go with the heat at gmail.com tweet at us at go with the heat facebook.com slash go with the heat we would love to hear from you and if you give us an extra 50 cents we'll look into licensing very very bad 80 songs <laughs> I'm sure they're not that expensive. I'm going to find a few. Um, not yet. I, I'm you sure I've talked to, to you in our, <laughs> in our podcast. I'm sure 50 cents, an extra 50 cents is enough. I think we can save up and we can get ourselves some awesome 80s music for the podcast. <laughs> At least just get someone to do us some riffs on a guitar. Yes. <laughs> So that's what we wanted to open up the show with today. We wanted to talk about, hey, what are our plans with Go With The Heat? Just to reiterate, nothing is going behind a paywall. We are not accepting advertising. Go With The Heat will always be free. It's always going to come out on Friday. This Week Advice is always going to come out on Wednesday. Like We have no plans to change the show. The show's life is not contingent on us raising money on Patreon. We just would love to see your support on there and help us grow this show to be bigger and better than ever. So without much further ado, let's take a look back at some of our favorite moments from season three, too, because there was a bunch of them. And we've talked about the meat fondler a bunch. <laughs> the meat fondler's but... in there. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I'm in. in the process of trying to make hats. <laughs> I know a guy. Because we got people chumping. We got old man Willie's flashback. We got Melissa talk about why you can't love hookers. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Crockett having a waterbed on his boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get this clip show on the road. These are what we think 
are our best moments from season three. Episode 22, Viking Bikers from Hell. My eye. The part that catches my eye is the crossbow they brought to do the hit. <laughs> yeah, right, because that's that's your usual weapon. He had a crossbow bag that matched his jacket <laughs> when he pulled it out. <laughs> it was like a pleather bag. Because <laughs> you know that's not real leather. You know, <laughs> I can just picture the conversation. They're in the van driving over to do this hit. And they're like, damn, dude, why did you bring the crossbow? And he's like, man, I bought the crossbow. I've got to use it. You know, I bought the matching bag. Like, like, come on, this is a perfect situation. I finally get to use the crossbow. Like, fine, we'll let you use the crossbow, even though it's not practical at all. Episode 5, The Good Caller. I was thinking, when we got to this point, because... Tubbs and Crockett are doing their normal Cooper and Burnett deal here. Not going over so well, though. <laughs> we want to get in on your deal, basically. And so we, we're we going to buy a whole bunch and yeah. blah, 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 blah. You know, the things that seems to work on adults, but not on children. And I was thinking, isn't this the point in time when 21 Jump Street should take over? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what should be happening. We need Johnny Depp to show up and be like. Uh, Shouldn't they get R- Richard Grieco to go hey, talk to these kids? No, Richard Grieco <laughs> can stay out of it. <laughs> He ruined the show. They need Johnny Depp and um and Dumb DeLuise's son. <laughs> I can't remember his name. <laughs> Peter DeLuise, thank you. And and Holly Robinson uh, Pete. Yeah, Holly Robinson to yeah, go. Exactly. And a guy with a giant feather for an earring. I don't remember his name in real life. <laughs> I remember his name in the show. <laughs> yes, I love my, I love Twenty One Jump Street. Of course you do. Of course you love 21 Jump Street because everything else 80s related, you seem to know everything about it. Well, I mean, what could go, what could be better? It's a cop show about undercover teenage cops in high schools. And it's got Johnny Depp in it. (laughs) Cream of the crop. (laughs) Anyways, yes. But no, no, we got these two old geezers trying to (laughs) deal. (laughs) Episode 13, Down for the Count, Part 2. We head over to to the precinct and the whole team is meeting with Castillo. Everyone's all upset and sad and Castillo comes walking in all nonchalant. And I almost expected him to say like, hey, who died? (laughs) (laughs) I think that would have been better than what he said. (laughs) Why are the sad faces? (laughs) Because he says, quote, keep your grieving in private. We have a job to do. I know you're hurting, but keep your your grieving out of here. I don't give a crap about anything. I have a mustache yeah. to wax. Don't tell me about your problems. Honestly seems annoyed through most of this episode that people are upset about Zito being dead. I know. And the only thing I kept thinking about, I was like, maybe it's because he processes things differently. So he goes home. He puts on his Speedo. He does his ninja <laughs> stuff. He does a few <laughs> laps in the ocean. Yeah. He puts his Speedo on. He sits down. He has some Thai food. I don't know. He needs something spicy. I, I, maybe that gets it out. I don't know. As soon as she said that, I unfortunately visualized him in his speedo playing with nunchucks. <laughs> yeah, right. Like when he sits, where he's like looking out in the ocean in that episode. And he just yeah, exactly. Speedo. Like, did he really need to be like, in a speedo for this? Yeah, like playing with nunchucks, staring out the sliding glass door at the ocean. <laughs> Episode 14, Cuba Libre. Dead. Yeah, a crime was committed in our city. It's mm-hmm. our job to investigate mm-hmm. it. And I'm starting to believe in you again, Castillo. He says, we're going to do our jobs, yeah. and I don't care what you say. And Slay tries to say, hey, you should understand this. You're a former Fed. You used to work for the CIA. Castillo's not hearing it. We're doing our investigation. So we get Castillo the Decider again. <laughs> we haven't seen Castillo the Decider in recent episodes. I've missed him. Yeah, well, <laughs> where was he? Where was he when Larry was dead? Where See, were you he just didn't that? Care. Huh? Yeah, he did. That was care. a whole lot of not That's his what... problem. It was a whole lot of clearly, not his problem. But now he is he... back. He never liked Larry. That's what this is all about. He never liked Larry <laughs> and his fish. Yeah. Well, it doesn't help that Larry's a drug addict. <laughs> and an alcoholic. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Larry. He did you so wrong. Castillo also says, don't sign your reports that give them to Castillo. Then he will sign them as if it's coming from him. And Tubbs is like, we could take the heat. <laughs> Why are you chumping around all over? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I didn't watch the episode, well, so I have to play us like a couple chumps. We can sign our own paperwork. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention to the episode, so I have to add what I can, and I just know that that's what that's what Tubbs would say. <laughs> episode two, Stones War. Up in a small South American country, it's in the Nicaraguan countryside. It's a very small 
town and everything's going great there's like a parade <laughs> happening in the street well i was like that was like a funeral though yeah <laughs> just so you know <laughs> that, was that was like a body in a casket <laughs> it was a fantastic parade they were carrying boxes <laughs> yeah that and was- that's better than me i was thinking like miami's looking pretty run down these days they must be in like <laughs> south be beach like in the yeah the bad side of town <laughs> But everything's going fine. <laughs> the funeral is going off without a hitch. Everything's going good. There's like some happy music playing. And then all of a sudden the mortars start landing all over the city. And then this invading army comes and just starts massacring people all over the streets. Yeah. And this militia really has a dis- strong disliking of trucks. And not <laughs> like trucks. Up. <laughs> oh, yeah. No one can own the truck. <laughs> Episode 15, Duty and Honor. On the Savage, who's going around like trying to pick up a prostitute, just starts zeroing in. And my first thought was, man, he's an astute investigator. <laughs> then my second thought was, or he's just a racist. <laughs> 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 yeah, because he was the only guy that was a minority. He and, zeroed in on him right away. I, mean, I guess he'd be suspicious in not many people pick up hookers by foot. <laughs> True. I mean, wait a minute. <laughs> yes. You want to walk back to the bus with me and then go to my room? You want to come meet me behind these dumpsters? <laughs> yeah, I know. Come on, baby. Hop on handlebars. <laughs> But he does zero in on him real fast, has instant suspicion, and then goes up like, hey, Judy, I think that's a murderer. Go, Hey, Gina, I think that's a murderer. Go talk to him. I don't understand what he expected to get out of that, though. <laughs> like, just sending Gina in harm's way. Also, that also he gives her a phrase yeah. in Vietnamese <laughs> to tell him, and Gina has no idea what it means. It, it's like some kind of thing that Crockett knows is going to set him off. Say this because it'll piss him off. <laughs> Episode 18, Lend Me an Ear. They settle on that they're going to rent some equipment from Duddy, and then they're going to go place it. So we head out to Dykstra's that night, and the team's going to sneak in and plant these couple radios that Duddy had recommended. And when I mean sneak in, they literally bust the lock, <laughs> spray for lasers, and climb it all the way into the house. Okay, but if the guy has lasers, let's address this. He lives on the freaking water. <laughs> they drive their boat up to the house. <laughs> Does he not have cameras that like video record outside of his house? Anybody could just drive their boat right up to your house and come in. Also, he doesn't the lock more, the door. They just walk, the they come in. Not locked. <laughs> the more important thing on my mind is did you guys hear the Pink Panther music in your head during this scene? <laughs> it's also hilarious that that um Tubbs makes Switech spray the laser so that Switech can go under. And then Tub just goes under it like no problem. He's like, man, you're too big to get under there or something. Like, I don't know. It's like, like you can't make it. <laughs> but I don't need the help. Episode 8, Better Living Through Chemistry. What we find out here is that Clarence has rented computers and has, forced, has kidnapped the chemist, Luna, and Izzy. And is keeping them trapped there because he's going to ransom them back to Wango for a million bucks. But can someone explain to me why the chemist doesn't care that he's been kidnapped? He's like, whatever, just eating all yeah, kinds of crap. And he like- just <laughs> keeps making synthetic cocaine. Like he just uses the rented computers. Why did he even rent the computers and shit? I don't know. I have no idea. If he just hold them yeah. for ransom. Why did he have them actually make the cocaine? I don't know. <laughs> so many from questions. From this point on, yeah, from this point on, we just get more questions. We don't get any answers. <laughs> we just get more questions as we go forward. <laughs> At Wango's, Crockett's retelling his story like his backup. Like, look, I'm not a cop. Trust me. Oh, listen, so, even though so I cool. behaved like, like a cop at the club shooting, it's all right. I'm not a cop. But then Izzy and Clarence uh-huh. call and they set up this staged call as if Sangris is beating him up <laughs> and he wants a million dollars for the ransom or he's going to hurt the chemist. Oh, Izzy's acting. <laughs> his acting is so funny. He yes. is the greatest living actor. Um, well, yeah, I mean, this, is, is. this is proof. He is. And he shows it. Oh, yeah. He's got this on yeah, his, so, like, reel, and- right? <laughs> like, his credit reel. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and once again, Izzy's playing along with it pretty well. So, uh, once again, did not feel like Izzy was kidnapped. Episode 9, Baby Blues. You will run into a detective that is not willing to help them because they want to dust the entire place for Prince. He's like, that's a waste of time. He's not that bright, though. (laughs) Come on now. He is going over and above to convince them that the case is closed. Go home. Nothing to see here. (laughs) We don't have to do any investigating. Everything is all good and buttoned up and with a ribbon on it. You know, like you almost get the feeling because... 
in one of the next scenes, Crockett's talking to him on the phone, and Crockett's, like, threatening to call his boss, you know, and he's still pitching it. Like, everything's fine. They clearly kill each other. Why do we need to investigate? It's not like we're cops. I know. Um, <laughs> Which I, I love that they that he, Crockett threatens like, do I need to have my lieutenant call your your lieutenant? And as soon as he says that, Castillo turns and walks away. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, crap. I have nothing to do with this. It's like, do I have to have my dad call your dad? No. Eventually, it does pay off because they find that detective has to eat crow big time. <laughs> yeah, because they found one print. It belongs to Hector Borges, Famiglia chauffeur, on the front door. Yeah, and the guy, the guy who brings it out, like of all places, was on the front door. Who would have thought? Like all sarcastic. <laughs> Episode one: When Irish eyes but are crying. Before we go meet Max for the first time, we get to see Gina and Karun walking down the beach on the Miami waterfront, and it appears that Karun has had some sort of problem with his shirt, like it's lost <laughs> several buttons. <laughs> He's just <laughs> blowing in the breeze, and all you see is Liam's Liam Neeson's a- nipples. <laughs> Liam's aiming to get some ass. Like, this goes from a walk to a drink to a dinner to yeah. a back at my house. <laughs> yeah. He's working it. <laughs> Credit to Vice when it gets when I get sexy because you're right. They're on the beach, then there's dinner, and Gina's dressed up right now. She's wearing gloves, like the yeah, long, like the long arm black gloves. gloves. <laughs> and, yeah, they're having some drinks. Uh-huh. Then when we get to the sex scene, it is a very tasteful sex scene but compared it's steamy, to though. it is steamy. It is true. That's pretty. It's pretty hot for for network TV. TV but it's not foot rubbing, dripping, okay, and sweat talk about sex that. scenes <laughs> like we've seen before in Miami Vice. It's not vomit <laughs> inducing. <laughs> I, I just I love that. The, the scene when they're there, like they're trying to have small talk before the the sexy time happens. <laughs> Canoodling. And, um, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Liam Neeson asks Gina, so what's it like being a cop? And I'm waiting for it to say, well, I pretend to be a hooker mostly. And- <laughs> <laughs> I like being a hooker. Most of the time, that's what I do. Until that one time that I actually might have been a hooker momentarily. <laughs> we don't talk but about I, that. I mostly blocked that out. The therapist says it's okay. <laughs> Episode 10, Streetwatch. the county jail, Vic is talking to Carla on the phone. He says he can't bail her out. Obviously, there's too much heat on him to bail His her out. His mom won't let him out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> she apologizes about the drugs, wants him to say that he loves her, which he doesn't say. Because he doesn't. She's a hooker. <laughs> we get more proof later on when he tells her that she, she can stay at a shelter. <laughs> well, I mean, he can't rule what he's got going on with his wife. She takes care of him. <laughs> the lousy cheating bastard can't spring for a motel room? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Apparently not. Gina, no, honey, you got to stay at the shelter. <laughs> Gina is also working deep undercover, like in the jail, working undercover. And she comes up to Carla. She's Carlisle. not working. She's taking her break. She just takes her <laughs> lunch break in the in the lockup with the hookers. Gina starts talking to Carla, says that you got to get yourself a new pimp. I got a pimp, Butch. Which I, my, <laughs> Sorry, that name. My favorite Tubbs <laughs> undercover name. <laughs> Butch takes care of me. He'll come bail you out if you give him a call. You should switch pimps. Butch is the one. You know, because you can do that like, really super easily. <laughs> Just like transfer over. Like, I don't want to work with you anymore. So uh, I'm going to go to this other guy. Episode 19, Red Tape. I think if, if you want to be honest, in the, the people that were in the know right now have got to be Crockett, Castillo, and Tubbs. Crockett couldn't, so hold there's on, no hold way on, he could not on. know. They have to have, they'd have to have him involved in it. They couldn't go on without him. Like, he'd have to know. We're back into this situation again. Either Switek knows, and this is all, and, and this exchange <laughs> between them is for absolutely nothing because there's no one else in the room. Other than Tubbs laying the smackdown on him just one time. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, I or, really don't think, go ahead. <laughs> or he's just throwing shade at, at, at Switek, and poor Switek, nobody loves him. <laughs> I know. He even talks about, he like, don't you think that when the, I felt that way when Larry died? get out of here and throw it all in but i did see that's why i think it, he didn't know at that point i think later on he was let in which is why i think that crockett didn't know then either they just never say later when they do yeah, maybe tell right. them yeah you're probably right but that's screwed up because this is the only time he like one of the only times that he ever brings up larry after host larry 
Yep. So he never like, brings him up. Well, Tubbs just like crushing him, just like <laughs> ruin all that for him. Larry definitely comes up in season five, but mm. yeah, but they don't really talk about him after that. Yeah. Yeah. But there's no other officers in the precinct at that time. It's just them two. Yeah. So. No, I think, I think he didn't know. And that, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe Crockett didn't know. And at one point he told, they told everybody like, Hey, okay, this is going on. Or, Cause I mean, he did ask. White Episode 23, Everybody's in Showbiz. Who had been killed or not at this point. So my thought was was that, that he was just knocked out in that box and they were going to burn his ass alive. But then he never came back in the episode. So, I'm, so I, I <laughs> no, guess no, maybe no. you're right. No, because remember, he was, he was also knocked out. If, if that was the case, he was knocked out for hours, like two days. Because he's in the trunk of the car with blood. Maybe they mouth. hit him really hard. <laughs> also, what did you think they did when they put bodies in the crematorium? They just like stuck him in there with like a poker or what? I thought they put him in a casket. No, it's a car. We get to pay for a casket. How would you waste the casket? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna pay for a casket just for them to burn it up. I want a fancy ass cremation. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they put him in the flammable cardboard box, and they they, they sprinkle it. No, I'm just kidding. With, with lighter fluid. And put you in I there. want you to put me in a full size casket and a bunch of crack cocaine. <laughs> Actually, I don't even think they put you in a cardboard box. I thought they just slid you in. Like your body in. I don't know. I'm wearing all kinds of things. Yeah, today. like naked. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 17, The Afternoon Plane. stumbling around and he finds his way into a store. He not finds his way. He kind of muscles his way he into a store in. that's closed. The man is trying to tell him that <laughs> we're closed. And then he sees Sally. Sir? The man is really adamant. Like, we are closed. You cannot come in here. He also says later that there's no guns allowed on the island. So he doesn't have a gun. But, but Tuff's like, let me in here. Oh, wait. I know you. We I've greased you up before. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten slippery Dude, together. He, so Tubbs is like all push. Give me a gun. Buy, sell me a gun. And, you know, and the guy's like, like, sir, this is a bakery. Like, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I know it's like a grocery store. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I got no guns. <laughs> Tubbs is just going to random people. Sell me a gun. Give me a gun. You have a gun? Give me a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and then he sees Sally, and he gets all like, like caught back, you know, and he starts acting like, "Oh, oh, you're the one." Uh, I'm sorry, I never called you back. <laughs> That's why I'm saying I think this episode is proving that if you have a sweaty experience with tubs, you need to flee the area <laughs> and ne to never return. Episode 7, LVA tries to pull a gun on him, but old man ain't having none of that. Pulls takes, out his billy club or yeah, something. He pulls out his billy club, handles him, takes his gun, kicks. He's like, go on now. Get out of here. Scram. <laughs> <laughs> Runs him you out of the room. Scamp. Just get out of here. <laughs> and then he has the weirdest flashback ever. He has like a flashback while having a heart attack of like <laughs> saving the Alamo. It was the most Texas thing I've ever yes. seen. <laughs> flashback heart <Yes>. attack. <laughs> Dude, he, he's having a flashback of a John Wayne movie he saw where John Wayne was just massacring Mexicans. <laughs> Not even him. <laughs> the duo comes around the corner and he shoots at He actually shoots at them, but they get out of the way. Then he goes down. And they find that he's taking pills for nitroglycerin. I got it's pretty clear he's clutching his heart. I think us as an audience understand he's got a heart condition. Well, Tubbs is like a doctor at that point. He's like, oh no, look, see, he opens it up, nitroglycerin. I don't know. I don't know. Until I until they saw the pills, I thought he just had the or something. <laughs> Episode 16, Teresa. Yeah, turns to the side and like takes yeah. it real fast. And he's like, oh, you're back again? And she's like, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a certain type of cop that could notice the signs of that and also notice track marks, say, in between toes and fingers and things like that, it would be a vice cop, right? Like, okay, but he was the dark I don't know. finger, okay? He can't tell everything. <laughs> I, I don't know. He didn't notice anything about Larry. And I mean, Larry died of a drug overdose. Hey, they cleared him. Did yes, they clear they him? Did. They cleared his name completely. I don't see you the evidence. Sully, don't you dare sully Larry's name and bring it up with hers. <laughs> I want to see the evidence to that. She's a real junkie. Later in the episode, we see Teresa. By she the shoots way, up between her is toes. Is that a waterbed? <laughs> I thought that too. I was like, "There's no way you can have a waterbed on a boat. The weight on that would not be How right." Double the motion in the ocean. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, 
Did you like get so it? nauseous, man? <laughs> Boat's moving one way, the bed's moving the other way. No, it's full of hot oil. Atomic <laughs> 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 lizard. Yar, just hold on to the sides. Oh, get your <laughs> Slash it around. <laughs> Secure that mask. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 11, Forgive Us Our Debts. Now off to the Venus Clam Trap. It is a food cart out in front of a stadium. Who knows what kind of stadium it is because it is Florida. It could be bullfighting. It could be high lie. It could be football, who? baseball. Who knows what the hell it could be. Who buys clams from a truck? <laughs> I knew it. These clams knew it. at a sporting event. <laughs> Since you said who, I was like, he's going to go, who wants to buy these clams from a truck? <laughs> Since we're talking about bone and people who want a bone. Like, <laughs> it's an aphrodisiac. <laughs> Those are oysters, not clams. <laughs> John knows. It's a Florida thing, okay? They Maybe when work. they go to games, they they eat clams from a truck. I don't know. <laughs> and one of, in the scene too. So they're parked out, taking out the clam truck, and uh, <laughs> Felicia sees something suspicious, and she makes a phone call. And when she makes the phone call, you can see the menu. And that's it. That's all they serve is clams. There's like steamed clams, boiled <laughs> clams, like fried clams. <laughs> like there's like no other option. John, I, Can I, I get don't know. calamari on a stick, please. <laughs> I don't know if you have like sandal though. You are in the land of gooey duck farms. Oh, gross! Looks like a big old <laughs> booger or something. It doesn't mean I eat them. <laughs> Just because other people are dumb enough to doesn't mean I am. <laughs> it, it's a sea booger. In case you were wondering what a gooey duck was. It's a it sea yeah. booger. Google it. It's it's really gross. Episode 20 by Hooker by Crook. The second thing is, is who's, who's the bigger lie right now? The madam who, it, who just didn't tell him that she was a madam, but at least told him her real name? Or the undercover cop who gave her a fake name and basically everything she knows about him is fake. Who's telling the bigger lie there? Yeah, Melissa. Because this is something that caught your attention while we were watching this. Yeah, too. I said like, like he can't act like he's high and mighty in this situation. He lied about everything. At least she told him her name. He had no reason to lie to her if he didn't know she was in the investigation. Why didn't he tell her the truth? What was he going to do? When? At what point was he going to tell her the truth? <laughs> like, hey, I'm an undercover policeman, exactly. and Tubbs is not really a Jamaican businessman. No. <laughs> yes, shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, he doesn't, so, he doesn't even um, tell her his real name. And then he acts like he's so high and mighty, like, well, you know, sorry I had to lie to you. And she's like, this was all a setup? He's like, no, it wasn't a setup. Which I had no idea. I was just lying to you and boning you. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 21, Knock Knock, Who's Listen, There? You have to admit, looks suspicious. Oh, Talk yeah. This, tubs, I'm not saying it doesn't look without suspicious. Without backup. <laughs> <laughs> doing a deal without backup with money that we can't verify if they should have even had and then magic d rate and all of the drugs and money are gone and they're pretending like you know like it, they didn't oh, take no, it i get so, that I mean, it's suspicious but what i'm saying is i'm never gonna side with ia so <laughs> i have seen enough nypd blue i know what they did to bobby simone i'll never forgive them <laughs> not happening <laughs> Episode 6, Shadow in the Dark. Crockett asks Steele, it's like, do you want me to be easy on him in my report? And it's like, Crockett, did you just ask if to fake a report? No, I just meant like, should I write it up like like George egged him on more or something? Yeah, like as in lie on my report? Eh. <laughs> clearly, the, clearly the guy in the wheelchair was falling out of the wheelchair. And all he was doing was trying to grab the wheelchair and catch him. <laughs> So right now we see Ray and he is so serious about a guy who has, at this point, uh, the only crime he's committed, stealing pants and fondling meat. <laughs> hey, you know what? Those the, meat the, fondlers are the worst. They go from that. The, to the, the, this is a major crime. They have two different departments working on this. I know. I know. The meat fondler case. <laughs> but screw those hookers that work over on Hooker Alley. We're not going to help them out. <laughs> we gotta catch the pant thief hey you know what he's messing with people's dinner they were gonna make that damn steak and now they can't because he's fondled it all up <laughs> ruined it 
And right when they're getting up, getting ready to leave, Ray just comes busting in, slaps an envelope on the counter, sits down in a chair in the corner. The note says, basically, if if I was you, if I was working this case, I'd stop. It's from the burglar, obviously. No, no, that's not from the burglar. That's Ray no, saying that's how- No, that's from Ray. That's from that's Ray. Ray saying he that? He handed them a note to talk about how much he didn't like yes. them working the case and how he didn't want to work with them. <laughs> so it was like, I'm really yeah. pissed off. I'm working with you. Like, he didn't think they could do their job yeah, like, and they were like mediocre, right? And then that's what it was, right? He was mad they were working it. He didn't want to work with them, but he was being built, forced to. So he was like a kid. I'm pissed off at you. Here's a note. Read it. I'm going to sit here with my arms crossed while you look at me. Yeah. While you read it, and then he's like, "Okay, let's go see who your friend is." Ray doesn't even say anything. He slaps yeah. down the envelope. But like high school, like passing notes. Like, can you imagine? Like he's he's sitting in this car, and he's writing. I think you guys stink. You guys are no fun. <laughs> You're a dude. And then butt. he folds it up and go, "Yeah, exactly. You're a poofy butt." He goes and gives him a note. <laughs> That's what he did. Yeah, you know. I, I was just thinking at this point, like, why doesn't someone just punch Gilmore? Yeah. <laughs> Episode three, kill shot. That they had set up in the room, showing Tico kill the hooker. And yeah, so you know, it's kind of you know, it's kind of like a snuff movie they're watching, <laughs> or fetish porn. I don't know. Well, don't know Frank how, is watching it like it's not the first scene. <laughs> and Frank is watching it as if he's like, ah, oh, not again. Not another hooker. <laughs> it's distracted, man. The buff chick was in the back, and I kept. I looking know. At her. I know. <laughs> That pup chicken checks everything. <laughs> Miss Batista is very happy with herself, by the way. She's got a gigantic smile on her Can face. Can we just talk about that lady's an evil bitch? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. She is. She's so evil. The whole entire time, she's so smug about everything she's done. <laughs> she's so right smug. She's smug basically... Face. She basically tells him, like, your brother's got a temper and a small penis. Yeah. Yeah, she talks about, like, I don't know which is worse, his temper or his small penis. Like, <laughs> when how- she says that, the camera cuts to this other security guard with a mustache, and he's just like, she nods his head. He's like, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. It is really small. Yeah. <laughs> no, she talks about his performance. We've like, all yeah, seen it. performance. And yeah. she's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, it's a bad yeah, performance. Yeah, I've seen it. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, he really we watched all the videos. That. We got a whole collection of them. <laughs> Episode four, walk alone. And Trudy goes in and sees Tubbs. Now she's concerned for Tubbs. He's way peed up. She sits down, looks at his face, and Tubbs says, "Hey, we should act like we're married." <laughs> so she so goes nat- in to act like they're married. <laughs> so naturally, that means to Tubbs that he accuses Trudy of chumping around on him. <laughs> Right away, it goes from like, "Hey, we should we should be married" to like, "You're chumping on me. You're making a chump out of me." I don't know how many other ways can you say chumping. And and while they're arguing, I I don't know if you noticed, but Trudy Tennant goes, "Does this mean we're not gonna kiss? That you're not gonna kiss me?" Yeah, I know. Chubbs uses the word "chump" like 15 times in this argument. (laughs) You're playing me like a chump. You're chumping around on me. (laughs) You're chomping out. He's using it like like, <laughs> like in Rick and Morty, like you're squanching. <laughs> it just means whatever you want it to mean. <laughs> or you're smurfing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I really smurf that up. <laughs> it is my favorite tub sign ever. You're chomping out on me. <laughs> Are you chomping around on me? <laughs> Episode 12, Down for the Count, Tritech Part 1. comes one. up and grabs him and tells Zito, like, we're going out after. the f- after, And so Zito just has to make one quick stop, and he heads out to the gym. So here we are at the final scene of this episode. He walks in. He's alone. The gym is empty. The music's playing in the background. It's kind of smoky outside, so they do a good job of building up this scene. You see, as Zito is in there, a car comes pulling up, and three of Guzman's men come walking in. Zito is totally alone. No vice team, no backup, nothing. He doesn't have anything. He is there alone. We jump outside and we see Zwitek's car come pulling up in front of the gym. Zwitek gets out. He's got some food with him. He's got him. him food to celebrate, yeah. And he comes in. He starts calling for Larry. No answer. So Zwitek starts to get nervous. He pulls his gun out and he starts running around the building because he knows something is wrong. His friend wouldn't mm-hmm. do that. He wouldn't. He wouldn't be doing something shady if he wasn't there. There's something wrong. He comes through the building. He gets to the back of the gym where the shower. The showers are running. He turns the corner. You have the camera from behind Zwitek. He turns the corner and he sees Zito. He's sitting on a chair, propped up in the corner in the shower. He's got a needle sticking out of his arm and he's clearly died. And Zwitek, Zwitek doesn't. He doesn't 
run to his friend. He doesn't scream out. You just see this look of despair come across Switek's face as he sees his dead best friend, who just had one of the biggest nights of his life, dead, sitting in the shower. He walks over to him. He kneels beside him. He doesn't try and shake him or check for a pulse. He just reaches out to his friend and embraces him in the final moments of the scene in one of the most memorable moments in all of TV that he's there with his best friend who has died and he feels like he's failed him. Mm-hmm. And he caresses him and holds him. And we get to be continued at the end of the episode. This was a great season of Miami Vice. This was a great season to go with the heat. Be sure to check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. Be sure to check out the website, go with the heat.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com, twitter.com slash go with the heat, facebook.com slash go with the heat. You know what? Like I said, you can find us anywhere slash go with the heat pretty much <laughs> <laughs> also this episode was brought to you by tubs veggie burgers quit dumping <laughs> around and buy tubs <laughs> <laughs> and hey look we totally understand that not everyone can support us financially that's totally understandable so check out the website go with the click on support and see all the ways all the other ways that you can support us like Rating us on your podcatcher platform of choice, emailing us, contacting us, telling your friends about it, getting people you know to subscribe. That might sound like a pyramid scheme. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I don't know what that I don't know what that means. <laughs> Be sure to check all that out. Be sure to email us, let us know what you think. And we're gonna see you all next time. Bye, pal. Bye.